Yo, my G, what are you saying? My G. What up, what up, and greetings. Yesterday I was surprised by news that Blizzard has announced that they're gonna be changing some cards. I know that players have been asking for changes to Hearthstone cards for a long time and they've been saying that why is Blizzard not making more changes? This is digital media and unlike things like Magic the Gathering where you can't really make changes because the cards have already been printed and unless there's bans, uh, there's nothing that you can really do about their effects. Uh, with Hearthstone that's different, you know, and Blizzard has actually starting to make those steps and with banning some cards from arena and with some cards being changed when the standard has rotated in and we had uh, next ramas and gvg leaf this seems like they're actually taking action to remedy some stuff because they've always been saying that they're trying to let the game to self-balance out and the ladder and the meta to sort of um, <clears throat> counter react to each other so if one deck is really prominent there's going to be another deck that is a counter to that deck and that's going to push it down you know that works in most cases but most of these cards led either to really crazy board advantage early on or to s sort of snowball effect where uh, one of the players gets a swing turn very early on and gets an unfair advantage over the opponent leading him to you know early victory and then uh, card like Yoxeron that was you know causing a lot of uproar lately because there's been some you know I don't want to say unfair tournament wins but they were sort of you know feeling unfair uh, because the player just praised Yok more hard than uh, the opponent so today we're gonna take a look at these changes and see how they're gonna affect the meta and I'm gonna give my opinion as to if I think they're gonna stay in some decks and if they're still going to be played or if they're going to leave the ladder. So the first two cards that we're going to be taking a look at today are the Shaman cards that are seeing change. The first one is Rockbiter Weapon that uh, is going to be costing two mana. This is one of the classic cards that hasn't seen any change since I can remember from beta and the combo uh, with Doomhammer was always there but it wasn't always so problematic as it was lately because uh, Shaman got very a uh, good early game with Totem Golem, with uh, Tunnel Troc, you know, with Tusker Totemic, that it just uh, steamrolled out of control. And Rockbiter Weapon is a card that you can either use early game uh, as a removal, and you don't even pay that one mana overload uh, like you do for Lightning Bolt. So you sort of suffer the turn after, so you actually pay two mana for a Lightning Bolt, similar to how much you would pay for a Frost Bolt. Or dark bomb or a quick shot and cards like that whereas uh, with the rock biter weapon you take free phase damage which is similar to something like a flame imp for early board advantage and the chance to affect the board early on uh, you take some phase damage with which in the grand scale of things doesn't really matter for shaman because if he uh, manages to develop the board early on he just steamrolls you right and then you can use the double uh, the second rock biter to deal 10 damage to you uh, with that Doomhammer and a lot of people have been saying that Doomhammer was the thing that should have been taking a look at rather than uh, Rockbiter and I don't necessarily agree with them because uh, one thing that these people are forgetting is that there is such a thing as um, weapon removal right and despite the fact that a lot of the decks on ladder right now which is Hunter Warrior and Shaman are uh, represented you know even Rogue uh, are represented quite frequently and I haven't really seen any decks apart from things like Warrior that always played Harrison Jones. I haven't really seen any classes play Harrison Jones or Ooze which they always have a chance to you know and uh, affect that Doomhammer and totally demolish uh, <coughs> the Shaman's hopes if he spends 5 mana plus 2 overload on a Doomhammer and then you remove that Doomhammer then you know you pretty much won the game. Uh, at that point if you're not like free damage away from dying so I think this change is great I think that it might actually lead to lightning bolt being reintroduced into the uh, mid-range shaman decks because they haven't played uh, lightning bolt before and face shaman if he's gonna play it I'm not sure about because now the combo to deal 18 damage with a uh, doomhammer double rock biter is gonna cost 9 mana which is kind of clunky and uh, 
even for one it's gonna cost seven mana plus the two mana overload the next turn uh, for that 10 damage uh, 10 damage for seven mana isn't that amazing despite the fact that it's not terrible so yeah really positive change the second change is just Crazy, incredibly great, which is Tuskar Totemic summoning a basic totem. So before now, Tuskar Totemic had a chance to roll one of eight totems. Uh, apart from the basic ones, it could do, it could make a totem golem, it could make a flame tongue, uh, it could make a mana tide and a vitality totem, right? And the moment you got totem golem or mana tide, you won the game. And I won loads of games on back of getting a Totem Golem Man and Man and Tight and the opponent just spending resources to actually deal with uh, the Summon Totem rather than uh, the Tuskar Totemic, which still stays as a free tomb creature on board. And if you cannot deal with Man and Tight the first turn, you just, you know, you won the game and you're laughing. And it does feel unfair. Uh, oftentimes it does feel unfair uh, if your opponent wins on base of, uh, you know, steamrolling you because of uh, Orleon advantage that he basically flipped a coin on, it feels uh, terrible and it just makes you want to uninstall Hearthstone and uh, we've seen that card being ba banned from a recent tournament uh, that was organized by Firebat and there was a lot of uh, positive reaction to that so I think this was one of the cards that uh, Blizzard was sort of forced to uh, take a look at and I think uh, this change is great I think that some decks, like the totem decks that we've seen recently uh, spread out, like they're not tier 1 decks uh, and they're probably not going to be tier 1 decks, uh, but they will still play this card. I can see them still playing this card because they want to create as many totems uh, to play early thing from below, cards like that. Yeah, it's just going to be a much healthier experience on ladder, uh, not being... Uh, decided on turn 2 with a coin or turn 3 when uh, Tuskar Totemic summons a roar and <clears throat> that was the sound of uh, Totem Golem being summoned, no? Maybe? The next card Blizzard is going to be changing is Call of the Wild and I was saying this when I did my card reviews for Whispers of the Old Gods and I was taking a look at Call of the Wild that usually when you combine effects in card games the card uh, comes out more expensive, right? If you have, uh, let's say, two Dark Iron Dwarfs combined as an 8-8 that does plus four damage, a uh, plus four attack when it summons, the card shouldn't cost eight, it should cost nine because for uh, double the effect, it only takes up one space in your deck. So because it's a combination of three cards, uh, the end result should cost 10 mana or 9 mana. I was saying that it should cost 9 or 10 mana uh, just in order to be balanced. I know that um, Hunter is one of the classes that really needs uh, late game because it can run out of steam uh, if you handle the early aggression well very very quickly and it doesn't really have any great card draw. Uh, people have been trying uh, decks with lock and load uh, with some success but not a lot of success. And this will affect their late game ever so slightly uh, that they're not going to be playing Savannah High Main into Coin Call of the Wild into Call of the Wild and just laughing in your face. And uh, this is also good in correlation with the Yoxeron nerf, uh, which we're going to be taking a look at later because sometimes the Call of the Wild was easily countered with Yoxeron, which now it's going to be harder because Yoxeron is going to die very 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 soon and stop casting its spells if I know anything about the Yoxeron effects uh, so yeah I think the card is now uh, more fair I think it was one of the strongest cards that came out in Whispers of the Old Gods and you know it is justified I could see it being on 10 mana and it might have still been played because of um, the crazy swing that it can uh, create if there's any minions left on board, right, that uh, Leok can buff to more attack. Whereas you get uh, 5 attack to face and you get the taunt wall with a 5-4, that's good, you know, for 9 mana that's that's decent, but if you have any other minions on board, uh, the hunter decks just go wild and you either die or you deal with the entire opponent's board <coughs> and you end up laughing. So. A great change, I was saying it from the beginning, 
Hate to say I told you so. All right, so the next two cards on the list are warrior cards. The first one is Execute, that again is from Classic Set and it hasn't seen any rework when uh, Standard came along, but it is a very premium removal when you take a look at it. It's a one mana, remove a minion, and the prerequisite is very easy to fulfill, I would say, in Warrior, just because of things like Ravaging Ghoul, which is, you know, a prime example of how you can uh, get out of a sticky situation. The opponent plays a uh, Flame Reef uh, Faceless, and there's, except for a hard removal, there's no other way uh, how to deal with it, right? You know, because Fireball doesn't deal with it completely unless you, you have a chance to ping it, which on turn 4 you still don't. The only combination of cards that just effectively deals with it while still uh, developing the board state is Ravaging Ghoul plus Execute. You get a free free on, on board and you deal with a 7 7. That's just crazy, you know, and uh, while I agree that uh, this is something that uh, kept other decks in check, uh, I also agree that uh, the premium removal, uh, removal can become uh, so crazily good that. There was essentially no decks that wouldn't run Execute as a warrior. You could always count on the fact that he's got two Executes in deck. Uh, when he's used one, you can always count that he still has the second one in deck. You know, there was, as far as I can remember, never any deck that wouldn't have uh, two of these cards. And uh, for two mana, this might change slightly. I still think that most warrior decks will run two Executes. Uh, but this is definitely a change that is justified looking at, you know, comparing it to Hex or um, cards like uh, Polymorph that are free or four mana retrospectively and cards like Sap that don't actually remove the minion, just force the opponent to replay it and is ultimately a, a tempo card rather than a removal card. You know, you can play it on a faceless but it's not gonna really deal with the faceless you know he can still replay it despite the fact that you can keep pushing for face and win before he manages to push you in the face so yeah definitely a good change uh, for me uh, i think that this card is still gonna be played but maybe in some decks uh it's gonna be removed and we will only see shield slam being played even though with the removal of just a car i don't know how shield slam uh, will still be viable. The second card that we'll see changes from Warriors uh, set is Charge. Now this card also, uh, I think it's seen some changes in the past, uh, but it was used currently for one type of deck, which was the OTK Worgen combo, which used uh, cards like Inner Rage, uh, cards like Ravage, I mean Rampage, uh, cards like Faceless Manipulator uh, to double up on the effect and deal upwards to 60 damage in a turn if you got all your pieces together, if you drop an Emperor Thorson and discounted a lot of them at the same time. And apart from taunts and apart from getting crazy amounts of armor uh, prior to death and being able to deal with the early uh, board presence that the warrior was putting out, which was essentially they were just playing cycle, you know, trying to get the pieces together. Uh, but if you weren't a deck that could uh, take them down early enough, uh, you would just straight away die. And there was no way how you could prevent it apart from taunt, which isn't really being played nowadays because the only reason why you would play it is because of OTK Warrior combo. And uh, this deck didn't see much play on lower ranks, but in high legend uh, play it was a big problem and it did counter a lot of the decks out there. So Blizzard always was very vocal about uh, them not wanting decks that are not fun and interactive, like the joke goes. And this is definitely one of the cards that is not very interactive because your entire deck is just removal and card draw until you get the pieces and then you don't have a board state because the moment you put something on board the opponent is dead. For the opponent it just feels like, oh this is the deck, I need to kill him now otherwise I die. And it's just inevitable, you know that it's coming and it was pretty much like a Patron Warrior that they decided to nerf uh, Charge and I think that Charge is going to be a thing that's... Uh, being seen less and less in cards coming out because it's a mechanic that can be abused and can lead to these OTK kills in one turn 
And that's definitely something that uh, the Blizzard development team doesn't really want to see in the game, and I do understand why. So uh, this might lead to charge being played with Patron uh, for a board clear, or Noxious was uh, suggesting that it might be played with cards like Magnetor Alpha to be able to deal you know, six damage three times into low cost minions and essentially clear the entire opponent's board with that. I don't know how that's gonna work out, but let's wait and get surprised. Definitely nice changes. Nice change. Okay, so the last two cards that we're gonna be taking a look at today are both neutral. The first one is the Abusive Sergeant that is going from 2-1 uh, to 1-1. One, one. And that's a change that I've been wanting for so long. I've been actually thinking in my head that this is one of the things that would um, help against the aggressive decks a whole lot. This card has actually been changed to a 2-1 from a 1-1 back in Alpha or Beta. And back in the day there was no optimal hyper-aggressive decks like we have now today. And uh, Argent Squire and Abusive Sergeant are pretty much played in all of these hyper-aggressive decks. You play that uh, Argent Squire followed by Abusive Sergeant on turn 2. and. Uh, on turn 3 you play something like a flame tongue and then you have a 3 one and a 4 one that can either deal with the board or just push for 7 damage to the face uh, which is crazy the only thing that really deals with um, these sort of plays is cards like ravaging ghoul and if you don't get these you're pretty much screwed uh, so this is a card that a lot of people wanted changed including myself and uh, yeah I don't think that it's gonna see much play similar to what uh, Leper Gnome saw after its nerf. I think that cards like Lance Carrier might be used uh, instead of it for until it rotates out but I don't really think that um, Abusive Sergeant will be represented uh, in two copies going forward in all of these hyper aggressive decks. The second card that's been changed is uh, Yogg Saron and we can't praise Yogg anymore. Well, we can still praise him, but uh, Yogg was always, uh, in my opinion, and I think that in Blizzard's, you know, intentions, uh, was intended as a fun card rather than a competitively viable card. And as I've seen previously in the video, we've seen some very unfair uh, competitive wins recently with Yogg Saron, and I've had some crazy game swings, like in my recent video I was playing against a hunter and Yogg-Saron cleared both Savannah High Mains, remained as the only cre creature on board with uh, an effigy up and one other secret I can't remember what it was and it was just like, whoa, I would have lost this game, you know, and there's so many games that you would have lost if you haven't had a good Yogg and um, yeah, sometimes it really feels like you're not really playing Game of Hearthstone when you've almost reach the win and you're playing again uh, around all of those cards and this is a card that you can't really play against at all. So yeah, unless you play something like a Soul of the Forest and again that's no guarantee because like I said I clear both of the Savannah High Mines despite their death rattle and the fact that they both have 5 health. Yeah I think this is a change that will only change the meta and the competitive play for the better because they these decks that played Yogg will probably still survive in one shape, form or another. But uh, there won't be as many comeback me mechanics and a red um, get me out of here buttons uh, like dropping him on the board and just praying. Because sometimes it didn't work out. But if you played enough spells prior to playing Yogg, it usually did work out. And you cleared the board, you drew a couple of cards, you were back in the game. Or even killed your opponent from fatty health. It didn't happen often, but it did happen sometimes. Uh, so yeah, definitely card that needed changes, and I'm glad that they went with this route rather than, you know, banning it from tournaments and stuff like that, because it's still gonna be a fun card. Now, just when it dies, it'll stop casting, and it gets returned, it'll stop casting, uh, stuff like that. Some people argue that it's uh, against the thought of Battlecry effects, and it sort of goes against the rules in the book. Uh, at the same time, I don't think that one card really breaks the game if there's a route to the exception and I don't think that it will confuse newer players because newer players don't really know uh, the, you know, the 
nuances about sequencing in Death Rattles and in Battle Cries and how exactly the actions work out. So I don't think that it will necessarily confuse them. It will just help a tiny spectrum of people that want to play Hearthstone competitively to play it more fair and for it not to be decided on a coin flip again. So very happy about those changes. Let me know guys in the comment section below what you think about those changes, which cards you see as more controversial card changes, like we had Blade Flurry in the past being changed with cards uh, you would like to be nerfed in the future. And with that being said, I'm saying bye to you and until next time, take care.